Hi, welcome to Ben's Business Podcast, episode number 52. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to get the most out of your audiobooks, such as using clips, bookmarks, and even getting a paperback copy of the book. Enjoy. And we're live. In this video, I just want to talk about getting the most out of your audiobooks. One of the ways that I get the most out of my own audiobooks when I'm out and about in the car or walking the dog, doing the dishes, tidying the house, and I'm listening to audiobooks, I'm getting through my reading list. I was having a conversation with Alan Martin from Chat Marketing here in Scotland. He also runs a very interactive group on Facebook called Social Media Dojo. It's a great group I recommend you join. The problem with audiobooks, as me and Alan were discussing, is that we can take it in in our subconscious. It is. It does stay there somewhere. I've done a video on that recently. But the problem is we can't truly refer back to it like we can with paperbacks, like something like this, where we've got tabs, and we've got that sitting in our bookshelf at home or in our office at work, that we can go to our bookshelf and say something to someone or you've got a project, you go to this specific tab, and, or you can even look at the table of contents easily and find the chapter you're looking for and, and, and tell someone what you were trying to tell them or add an idea from the book that you couldn't quite remember and drag it out from your subconscious and actually apply it. And that's, that's a big difference between having the, the paperback and the audio. But I do have a solution for you. And that's the kind of difference between audiobooks over paperbacks and a big dilemma I've kind of worked through and found a good solution. Again, with audiobooks and having a reading list is a good way to power through that list. Because what I'll do, there is the option for two times mode, so you can speed up your audiobooks to play at 1.5 or fast forward speed to uh, two times the speed of the, the normal listening speed if you can take it in that way. I, I personally don't like doing that. I don't think I would take it in. I've never really pushed myself to try it, so maybe leave a comment below if you do that and if you can still take in the, the, the same amount of content uh, in shorter space of time. But I use audiobooks to power through my massive growing reading list that I keep getting recommendations from my mentors, from my friends in Ben's Business Book Club and Instagram and everywhere. And I just find it like an overwhelming list. So it keeps growing. I put these stars next to the list to prioritize it. If someone re influential recommends something to me, I'll put a wee star next to that book and just mention that I, to myself that this is a book worth reading because Bill Gates recommended it as well as Ty Lopez or whatever. And then one of my friends recommends it and says it's such a great book. So audiobooks can get you through your list quick, but I don't think you can go as deep with the paperbacks. Almost skim through a book as a whole on Audible, but then buy a second your paperback to go deeply, if that book was worthwhile. But what doing it the opposite way can take longer. I, I personally read quite slowly. So if I listen to an audiobook and someone's reading it to me as I'm on the go, I can definitely get through an audiobook so much faster. So doing it the opposite way around, it takes a wee bit longer. And it, what I'll do with by going through that audiobook first, and then I can read deeply in that paperback, and I can get much more out of it in that way. A solution to the problem of like obviously being being out in your car driving about. Wanting to remember a really important point, you're out on the motorway and you can't do anything about it. Or I'm out on a walk with my dog, is I actually do pull the car over sometimes if it's if it's important enough, and it does save me a lot of time in the future because what what I'll do is I'll pull the car over, or I go out so early in the morning that there's not anyone about when I'm walking my dog, so I just like let my dog off the lead, and he he basically walks himself these days. I listen to my audiobooks um, with these well big headphones like that and I go out early, no one around so I don't have to worry about other people's dogs or my dog running out because we're out in a field. And I literally sometimes, if I get to a good point in an audiobook, I don't mind stopping and using this feature called, this is the secret now, is the, the feature called clips or bookmarks in Audible. So if you use Audible, you've got this wee option in the bottom right. I've got a wee screenshot, but I don't think this will make much use but if you're on an audio audiobook 
Uh, the bottom right hand corner there's a wee icon here and you see what that looks like there and you can click on that there's, if you click on that it'll pop up with add a note or listen to the preview of that and what I do is I click on add note and I actually type word for word what that paragraph or sentence was about that was really good like a, just a mini quote but a lot of the time I, I can write out quite a lot in there so it's funny when I'm walking my dog I've got my earphones on I'm not living in the now sometimes and I, feel, I do feel quite bad about it but it's one of the reasons I like get up so early and get out there so that I can I can <laughs> spend the extra extra time walking my dog and, and listening to an audio book at the same time. It's a great way to exercise and educate yourself for your, your mind and body. So exercise and audio books combined and to really get the most out of the audio books is using those clip, clips or bookmarks that Alan actually didn't know about when we were talking about this, so I just thought this this could be really valuable to those people who didn't know about it. Um, maybe Audible haven't done a great job of uh, advertising that part of, or that feature in their audiobooks app. So you click on that, brings up uh, add a note, and you click on that and I, I, I type out everything in there. So what that really does help with is when I go back through my bookmarks, which you, which you eventually, once you finish the book, you've got all these bookmarks and all I have to do is scroll through them and I can see roughly what those bookmarks are about based on the text that I've typed out. But if I was just to book, click on that clip, these are processes I've went through, just clicking on that clip or bookmark button and then leaving it is ineffective because in the future when you want to find those bookmarks about those that specific section, just like when you go to your... Um, your bookshelf and look for the tabs. You can go to your table of contents, but it's much harder to find the table of contents and then go to your audiobook and do that. So by just writing out almost paragraph or word for word, a whole sentence, it makes it easier when you go through maybe 50 bookmarks if the book's been really big or really good. And then you can find that specific quote or whatever you want to share onto social media or uh, share with your team or share this idea with a customer or a business partner. And that's how I use audiobooks more effectively than maybe the average person who just consumes it and then keeps it in their subconscious and their memory and doesn't write anything down from it. I also do use these books here, which are journals, and I, I, I do sometimes write out a book sort of summary. So I'll go through those bookmarks and I'll maybe write a wee summary of that book in here, word for word. And that gives me a, a book, that's how I've created some book reviews off the back of doing, doing that just with audiobooks without using a paperback. Uh, so yeah, pull the car over, stop walking, and if, I, like I was saying, if I get to a really good book, uh, a really good chapter or part in a book, there's times where I'm walking the dog and he literally goes and walk, walks himself because I'm like two steps and then I, I stop and I type out this bit. And then I walk another two steps and then, uh, and then I end up losing my dog, so I have to go and find them. So that's really valuable to me for reviewing and going back over a, an audiobook if I've not bought the paperback. And it's just a way of making better use of these audiobooks. I do recommend getting the paperback as well because what I also do on top of that, I've got a wee bookmark here, is I'll go back and read it a wee bit more deeply, but I then add highlights to those sections sometimes and reread the parts and I do like having this paperback just for comfort of ref uh, referring back to it, especially business books that are going to really grow my business. I want to be able to find those bits very easily for sharing with my team or business partners or, or clients to help them grow. If anyone's got any questions, I've got something from Sherelle. Sherelle never left an actual question but she says it's crazy how much your reading list grows. Yes, your, your to-read list just uh, expands and expands, especially when you're in Ben's Business Book Club and getting so many great recommendations from everyone. And all these books that are, that are coming out and getting promoted and marketed very well are always very attractive as well, but I always try and tell people who are getting into personal development or reading books is not to be tricked by the marketing because books like this that have been around before marketing was pushed in the way it is now in advertising and actually people who, who people didn't really make that much money off of books as much back then as they as they are now it's, uh, publishing multiple books has become like a good business now 
whereas people and writers weren't paid as much. It's just wise to look at the classics. Uh, there's a thing called Good, uh, Every Man's Library. Is is wise to have a look at that list, and that's a list of all the sort of classic books that we probably learn a lot of the lessons in the books we're reading today said in a different way. And like the Bible, the story of civilization by Will Durant. There's books like that. We we really are. Uh, some of the books are uh, repetitions of that, and we can go back to the the source and find some really great classics, uh, books that have stood the test of time. So, watch out for your your book list, your reading list growing over the top because uh, you'll never get round to reading all of them. That's one thing I've realised. My bookshelf's like overflowing. I need another bookshelf, and that's a big massive bookshelf. And I just keep buying them because I I I do plan to try and read them and it motivates me having the books sitting there to get the audiobook and read it and then maybe buy the, if, if I've not got the paperback I'll go and buy that as well if it's good enough so watch out for your reading list growing and make sure you're making the best choice when you read a book because it's life's short and as Ty Lopez always said uh, there's only really enough time to read about a hundred books very deeply and study them properly and if we try to catch up and keep up with all these new books that are coming out then we'll never get to those classics that have lots of life and even business principles in them for example if you were to find a book that was published today and read that over reading Think and Grow Rich it could be dangerous because you're, you're losing the time where you could what you could do, instead of reading 10 books that are new j just now, read Think and Grow Rich 10 times, and you might get much more value out of that. So I hope this was helpful. Um, that's how to get the most out of your audiobooks, by using clips in the Audible app and notes, so that when you return back to your audiobooks, you've got some type of reference like a paperback. I hope everyone found this helpful that's watching. Thanks for joining on Instagram and Facebook Live in Ben's Business Book Club.